Right, I'm talking to uh, Dr. Chris Allen, who's a lecturer in social policy at the University of Birmingham, specialising in Islamophobia. Let's talk about that in a moment. But first, um, uh, Chris, yeah. uh, just Jeremy Corbyn got into a lot of uh, flack <laughs> yesterday, day before, um, saying that he thought uh, one of the reasons uh, we were... I don't know, leaving ourselves open to these sort of attacks is because of our foreign policy. Yeah. How important is what we... I mean, are, are the people who do these things just mad and uh, easily perverted, if you like, by people for a, 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 more, you know, a more cynical reason? Yeah. Well, do, does it have a lot to do? Maybe, maybe you know, I don't know, some of these people have, have families who have been in, caught up in fighting and hurt yeah. or whatever. I mean, how important is foreign policy? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think there's, there's there's two responses to that. The first is in terms of the you know those who are who we would kind of you know kind of bracket in with what we've called extremists. And if you if you think about the message of the extremists is that you know is that Islam and the West will always be at war, you know, and that Islam and the West cannot coexist, you know. And and if you look at in Britain today, you know, people who are Muslim and non-Muslim live live alongside each other and get along perfectly well, you know, in the vast amount of cases, you know, so there's, there, you know, this is actually sort of, you know, a kind of myth in terms of that. But one of the things that, that you can do is, is if you look at the kind of history of the kind of Middle East and the kind of wars which have taken place over the last two decades, for example, if you've got some images of sort of, you know, children, you know, Muslim children who have been bombed and killed and, you know, and you're, you know, and in that kind of extremist kind of wing, you can use that very, very easily in terms of propaganda. And if you're somebody who's looking for, you know, a way of expressing your grievances, you know, that you know, you don't like Britain, you don't like the West, you don't like, you know, anybody, you know, probably. I mean, that's that's real. You know, that becomes very easy to use, and then say, look, you know, come and join us. This is proof. You know, you'll never be accepted in Britain. You'll never be accepted in the West. You know, and you can look on the, to, you know, to, to the extremes of the far right as well, and they would also say, would be, always be the same as well. They'll say, oh, you know, Muslims are always trying to kill us, and you know, they're trying to invade Brit uh, Europe, and so on, and so on, and so on. Well, you've got you've got yeah. that in, in terms of that. After, I think the other part. Sorry, yeah. No, go on. Keep carry on. I was going to say. I think the other part is that from research we've done, where we speak to you know sort of you know young Muslims in Birmingham, and we were trying to sort of talk and say, you know, what, why do you think that people, you know, the young Muslims may go and join? you know, may want to go to Syria and Iraq and join ISIS and so on. And, you know, one of the things they were saying is that, you know, they were talking about, that, you know, this, I guess, sense of grievance and so on. But they were also saying that actually, you know, as ordinary people in this, you know, as ordinary citizens of this country, they feel that, you know, that, that you know, that they want to talk about, you know, you know, foreign policy, but they don't feel that they can because, you know, this is one of the problems that you have is that if you do talk about foreign policy, you're seen to be kind of, you know, kind of erring towards this kind of extreme fringe. So I think in terms of this, I think Jeremy Corbyn, you know, in some ways was right. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure he articulated it, you know, in the mm. best way. But I think that, you know, that foreign policy is a very big issue. I think the politicians and government over the last two decades have been very, very reluctant to discuss this for a whole range of different reasons. And I think that, you know, like one of the things we do need to be able to talk about is and actually be more open about it and say, you know, I mean, as we saw from the, you know, some, some of the revelations over the last couple of years, you know, things around weapons of mass destruction, for example, you know, mm. they didn't exist. You know, so we need to be a little bit more honest around this. And, and I also, think that, that would challenge some, the extremists. There have been some pretty horrendous pictures of uh, going around, I'm sure you've seen them as well, yeah. of uh, American uh, pilots bombing uh, what were obviously innocent or, or yeah. obviously civilians. And, uh, and this, of course, uh, fuels the fire of hatred, doesn't it? And Absolutely. I suppose you know, children, young children running from the rubble of the uh, the bombed out homes, hospitals and schools in places like Syria and Iraq and Afghanistan are going to grow up with um, pretty, pretty terrible psychological problems. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, and, you know, it has this kind of knock-on effect. And, and, you know, I mean, most of us, whether we're looking at, you know, sort of, you know, children being killed in the Middle East or, you know, children being killed in Manchester, you know, those images mm. are going to shock and horrify us. You know, most of us are going to, you know, be, be, you know, sickened by the atrocity. But what we get is that, you know, those who are on those extremes, you know, will actually, you know, see those and actually see that as justification, you know. And, and I think that that's the difference. You know, it, it's so difficult for us to understand 
the kind of the, the thinking, the kind of psyche of, of, the, of these individuals that are drawn to these extremes. Because actually, those of us that kind of sit in the kind of normal everyday spaces, you know, are just horrified by these images. Whoever the victims are, whoever the perpetrators are. Let's talk about the the, the other problem that obviously will uh, will get worse now, and that's something that you specialise in: Islamophobia. Yeah. Um, I have seen. I mean, uh, it's been in a lot of the papers. Of one woman dragged off her radio show, and after after saying some really rather atrocious stuff yeah. uh, and, and quite a lot of people coming out and one, one woman rang me the other day on a, another program and said that James this is easy so I'll just send all these people back to the countries yeah. they came from um, you, you know with ideas that, that these in some way human beings are different to, to us I mean some people who feel that we could live a life in this country completely cut off from anything else that happens in this world of course we can't can we yeah no. And, I, and I think the one, of, one of the important things here is to stress is that in terms of Islamophobia, what we're talking about is something which is akin to racism. So if you don't agree, you know, if you don't believe in Islam, if you don't believe in the religion and the teachings of the religion, that's fine. That's not actually sort of Islamophobic to say, you know, I don't believe in your religion. You know, that's perfectly fine. You can say that about Christianity. You can yeah. say that about any yeah. religion whatsoever. I think also as well is that when there's, you know, sort of criticism, you know, so, you know, somebody, you know, as we saw on Monday, blows themselves up and, you know, like sort of claims to do that in the name of Islam, then that's perfectly fine to actually criticise that and condemn that. And, you know, and again, that's not Islamophobic at all. And also as well, you know, we see, I think the previous call, I just caught the end of it, and she spoke about, you know, some, some scenes we saw in Luton a few years ago when, a, you know, a particular group of Muslims, you know, were, were being very abusive towards, you know, British servicemen. And I think, again, you know, criticism and condemnation there isn't actually Islamophobia. What, we're, what I'm talking about is this kind of like, you know, when you see an, a Muslim woman who's walking down the street and she's wearing a headscarf and suddenly, you know, somebody thinks it's okay to spit in her face, pull a headscarf from her hair, you know, like, you know, you use physical abuse, you know, be violent against her, you know, because they feel that all Muslims are to blame, you know, for what's going on, you know, around the world, you know, or what's going on in, in Manchester or Westminster two months ago or so on. And that's really the kind of issue there. It's about this kind of idea of kind of, you know, hating all Muslims for, you know, the kind of what one or two or a handful of individuals actually do. And actually seeing all Muslims around the world as being either the same or at least capable of the same, you know. So, you know, your, your Muslim, you know, who's, who's in Raqqa, you know, supporting ISIS, you know, in that mentality is exactly the same as the Muslim who's living in South East London. And, that, and, and it's those kind of stereotypes and the kind of those broad generalised assumptions that actually, you know, sort of are very, very problematic. Is, is it uh, an illness... Islamophobia, and we've given this the yeah. name of phobia, but is that right? Well, I think that, you know, I mean, in Britain we have a great tradition of using terms which, you know, don't actually describe the phenomena. So we can talk about homophobia, which, yeah. you know, yeah. isn't, you know is, isn't a phobia. You know, we talk about anti-Semitism and, you know, you know and being anti-Jewish and hating Jews isn't actually the same as being anti-Semitic. And I think that, you know, that these phrases are coined, you know, like, you know, at a time to try and name something. But actually, in hindsight and reflection, you know, they're probably not the best terms at the time. I mean, I don't think it's about a phobia. You know, I mean, I've heard people say to me, well, it's, you know, it's, it's perfectly normal to fear, you know, kind of extremist Islamist ideologies. And, and yeah, that, that, you know, that, that's, again, absolutely fine. But this is about actually, it's not about a kind of literal interpretation of the term. Do you think... But it's about what we're talking, you know, the kind of process. Yeah. Do you think it's about time we behaved in a way, a similar way to uh, other countries? If you go to Dubai, I've never been, I am yeah. no intention of going, uh, apparently you've got to behave in a certain way because that's how they want you to behave. And maybe we should say the same thing here. If you come over to this country, then you you behave in a certain way here. It's not, uh, it's, it, you know, we don't deem it normal to wander around with your face covered and a little slit for your eyes. That's not how we live our lives over here. So if you want to come over here for a holiday, you want to come over here for a while, you're not going to dress like that. Well, one of the things I would just say there is, is that actually the vast majority of people who come here, you know, well, I mean, and let's make this distinction, the vast majority of Muslims in this country were actually born in this country. So, you exactly. know, so it's not as though they've come from somewhere else. The other point as well is that actually, you know, when people come to Britain, most people do actually behave the way we do. And one of the great things about Britain is that you can dress however you want. You know, you know we don't put, you know, restrictions on women, you know, you know, 
who you know, want to dress and, and you know who don't want to cover all of their body. And in the same way, we don't put restrictions on, on women that do want to cover all their bodies. You know, and I think that that's a very very British thing. And and, and you know, I, I, there are you know we, we need to have conversations about what makes us feel uneasy. And I think that that's perfectly fine. You know, you know, I mean, a full face veil does make a lot of us feel uneasy. And, you know, maybe we need to have those conversations. But in this climate, you know, where everything is so intense and, you know, like things like, you know, Manchester on Monday, you know, intensify this, it becomes very, very difficult. But I would say that, you know, for me, I mean, you know, this is this is a fantastic British value. And this is what the extremists want, want us to actually do. I mean, they the want us to stop being who we are. Yeah, exactly. The interesting thing, of course, is that, uh, and I, I mentioned this earlier, that, that a lot of terrorists, uh, terrorism and views yeah. of terrorism uh, come from this extreme form of Islam, uh, yeah. Wahhabism, which it, yeah. emanates from Saudi Arabia. And most of the people you'll see, if you go into London, of course, uh, as tourists covered up from head to foot, will be from Saudi Arabia. Uh, yet I don't hear any any kind of condemnation of what they do at all. In fact, we just sell them more and more weapons. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, you know, and, and this also, again, you know, kind of feeds into these kind of, you know, anxieties, you know, because you know, there's many Muslim organisations I'm aware of in Britain, you know, that, that kind of want to challenge some of these, you know, kind of contradictions, you know, the, the hypocrisy of, you know, kind of, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the West in many ways, you know, particularly, you know, in Britain, and we've seen this week with, with Donald Trump as well, you know, you know, you know, going, you know, being the first Muslim country to go to was Saudi Arabia, and yet actually, you know, Saudi Arabia itself, you know, is a, is a terrible record of, you know, human rights abuses, you know, I mean, beheading is still, you know, something which is actually used as corporal punishment in, in Saudi Arabia, and, you know, it's those sort of things is that, you know, we'll, we'll, you know and, and rightly so, we, we, we criticise, you know, beheading in terms of, you know, you know, ISIS and, you know, Syria and Iraq and so on, you know. And only you know, a few hundred happens, years ago, you know, we used to do it here, Chris. Yeah, and, but, but again, you see, and I think that, that's, that these are the things that we should celebrate in Britain because actually we've learned from our mistakes. Yeah, yeah. You know, we learned that actually, you know, it's not a good thing to, you know, to, to burn Catholics, you know, because actually we did that for a number of centuries and kind of come to our senses and went, well, actually, this exactly. doesn't work. And actually tolerance and, you know, this is where our kind of values really come from. We said, we've learned from our history and yet, you know, we, we, you know and, and, but this, and, and this is essentially what the extremists and the terrorists want. They want us to stop being who we are because actually, you know, Muslims in this country are free to be Muslim. You know, Jews in this country, Christians, you know, atheists, whatever you want to be in this country on, on, on the whole, you can actually be that. And, you know, as I say, you know, on the whole, you know, we, we rub along together pretty well. You know, I'm, I'm based in Birmingham, you know, and it, it's, a, you know, it's hugely, you know, diverse city. And for the best part, most of us actually sort of, you know, rub along fine. Today, you know, I was, I was at the BBC earlier, BBC Marbox earlier, and there was the armed police all around the, the city centre. And I would imagine that, you know, that Muslims in the city are as fearful for their well-being as non-Muslims, you know. And, and I just think that this is the kind of thing, you know, is that in Britain, you know, we sometimes in, in long... these kind of heightened times, we, we kind of forget who we are, and I think we forget the good things that we yeah. have. As long as those people who in, insist, and, and there are Christian sects that do it as well. I had a, 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 a radio show a number of years ago. I had a ridiculously stupid uh, so-called Christian bishop from one strange church come on and uh, said he could, he could cure homosexuality. Now, yeah. I, I invited him to just take the mick out of him, actually, I must admit. Um, but there are people who actually believe such ridiculous things as this and I think they need to be outed in whatever whether they're Muslims or Christians or anything else yeah I, and I, I agree I mean you know for me that you know my research has, has been into Muslim communities and into Islamophobia but I always say that there's no hierarchy of discriminations you know in British society what we want is we want everybody to be treated equally you know we can't be in a society where we think that, you know, homosexuality is a sin and that justifies that we can be discriminatory towards them. And in the same way, we can't, you know, justify, you know, that somebody wants to be discriminatory to somebody just because of the colour of their skin. You know, <laughs> actually, what we need to do is we need to embed this. This is what British values are about. We're about, you know, equality. We're about tolerance. We're about, you know, all of these things of giving people opportunities and chances. And I think that, you know, if we keep you know, reminding ourselves that this is what we're good at and this is who we are, then actually some of these things kind of fall into place a little bit easier for us. Do you think one of the problems we have here is that as a country, we are considered still 
by even people living in this country to be a Christian country. The reality is we are a secular country. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that one of the, and, and this is one of the things that, that, that I think that we, we need to do in terms of a country is actually begin to look forward and look at where we, who we are now and what we will be in the, you know, at the end of this century and the next century, rather than looking back all the time. I think that one of the problems with, with, with Britain is that, you know, and the kind of British psyche is that we look back to when we had an empire, when we were ruling parts of the world, and we talk about ourselves as being great, you know, great Britain, you know. Like, you know and then I think that we see that after the Second World War, you know, with mass migration, we look at maybe we don't have such influence in the world, and we still kind of think, oh, well, that was the cause of why we're not great anymore. And actually, it's a about the changing world, it's about the changing part of who we are, Chris, and I do think we should embrace our diversity and our future. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you to everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in today. I'll be back next Saturday at 10, and in 